firearms, alcohol, and tobacco? Sounds like a pretty good time. back with another firearms friday for everyone today we're going to start diving into theories on how to carry kind of piggybacking off what we discussed last week as far as your everyday carry goes today we're going to be hitting on something that is extremely debatable in any firearms community around the country and even potentially around the world and you're going to hear about this debate long after this video gets posted and i'm sure you've heard about this debate long before this video got posted but today I'm going to tell you why what you carry doesn't really matter so long as you're carrying something. I'm not talking about your everyday carry. We touched on that last week. 10 things you need to keep on you every single day. Today I'm getting a lot more specific and I'm actually going to be talking about caliber. Today I'm going to put in my own two cents about the 9 versus 40 versus 45 debate. So all my 9mm fanboys, you all sit there and you say, well if you're in an engagement, you need to be able to put as many rounds downrange as humanly possible. And you're not wrong. And all my 45 fanboys say it doesn't matter how many rounds you carry with you if you keep shooting and your target doesn't go down. And you're right too. So do I like 9mm or do I like 45? Or do I like 40? 40 caliber projectile is the exact same as a 10mm except for it just doesn't have as much powder behind it. What it is is essentially a 40 caliber projectile with as much powder behind it as a nine millimeter. The long story short is, it doesn't matter what you carry with you, a nine, a 40, a 45, a 380, a 38, a 44. It, it just doesn't matter what you carry with you if you can't hit the fucking target. All you nine millimeter fanboys are absolutely right. The more rounds you carry with you, the more prepared you're gonna be for any kind of situation. All you 45 fanboys are exactly right too, because if you can't hit your target, it's not gonna be knocked down. The mindset is there's not a lot of people out there that have been shot and there's even fewer people out there that have been shot and are willing to repeat the experience. A lot of these guns that you carry with you, a lot of these concealable kind of pocket single stack guns that are designed to be carried on somebody every single day were never designed for combat usage. You're not going to be out there, you're not going to be on the front lines with a Smith & Wesson bodyguard. These guns are meant to get you out of harm's way while providing a certain amount of security for you. The ballistics between the big three carry calibers, the 9, the 40, and the 45, aren't too dissimilar at all. Just going off of your standard full metal jacket target ammunition, typical 9 millimeters at 115 grains have a muzzle velocity of 1190 feet per second. Your typical 40 caliber ammunition of 180 grains has a muzzle velocity of right around 1000 feet per second. And your typical target ammunition of 45 right around that 230 grains has a muzzle velocity of around about 850 feet per second. Obviously a 45 is going to be a lot slower than a 9mm or a 40, but it also packs. Without a doubt, more of a punch, there's just more kinetic energy behind it. Does that mean a 9mm and a 40 are just bad calibers to carry? No, absolutely not. But what you need to do as a consumer is find out which one you personally like the best. For instance, I am a 9mm fanboy. I'm of the mindset that the more rounds I carry on me, the more safe I'm going to be and the more safe people are going to be around me. And if you feel that way too, that's wonderful. But you need to ask yourself a question. Can you draw your firearm under pressure and put accurate rounds downrange? And for all you 45 fanboys, you may say that less is more, meaning that you do want that extra knockdown power, and that's fine too, I get that. But again, you need to ask yourself the question, can you draw your firearm and put accurate rounds down range in a stressful scenario? All you 40 fanboys. Hello, you were few and far between, but I'm going to address you too. My name's CJ, how you doing? Firearms Friday, welcome, love to have you. Ask yourself the exact same question. In a stressful scenario, can you unholster your firearm safely, press out, and put rounds down range in an accurate manner? You might have 100 rounds that consistently deal 360 pounds per square inch when hit 
But if all you're doing is shooting the brick wall behind the guy that's assaulting you, are you really gonna do anything to stop him? Now you might make him piss his pants, which is perfectly fine, but we don't fire warning shots where I come from. And if you have the mindset that you do fire warning shots, you need to stop thinking like that because he is hell-bent on causing harm to you and your loved ones, on robbing you of your personal property. There's a newer kind of shooting that's sweeping the nation. It's not exactly new, but it's becoming more and more popular every day and it's long range shooting. We'll get into that here in a couple of weeks. The mindset that a lot of new long range shooters have is if they go out and spend thousands of dollars on equipment and different gear, that they're going to be able to knock a steel gong at a thousand yards. And sure, you might get lucky, but what goes into that, being able to reliably hit that gong at a thousand yards is practice. It's the same with every kind of shooting sport. You need to practice how you fight. Here's a really tacky quote. The more you sweat in training, the less you bleed in battle. Go out and train. Practice drawing your firearm in stressful scenarios. Unholster your firearm, punch out, and put rounds downrange accurately. And don't wait until next week to do it. You should be putting at least 50 rounds downrange every single week. And don't cheat yourself. Don't go out and buy a 22 model of the same gun that you carry. Actually use the same firearm that you keep with you every single day. Because only then will you truly know how your firearm functions. And only then will you truly know how you function under stress. In short, it doesn't matter what you decide to carry. A 380, a 9mm, a 40, a 10mm, a 44, a 357 SIG, a 357 Magnum, a 45, it just doesn't matter. You will be able to stop an assailant with the proper amount of training. So if you're looking for a suggestion on, on what to buy from me, I'm sorry I failed you today. Go to the gun store, find the gun that fits your hand, has a reputation of being a quality and reliable piece of work. Stay away from high points. I appreciate you guys sticking with me through another Firearms Friday. I hope that I could provide just a little bit of insight for you guys. Remember, train safe, train right, and train hard.